Okay. My name is Former Mello. Uh, this summer, I had the opportunity to um to intern at Intact Therapeutics, which is a small startup in Palo Alto. My mentor's name is Chris Son, and I'm excited to share with you guys what I learned. So, mucositis. What is it? Mucositis is basically a adverse side effect from chemotherapy. It's when you get ulcers down along your digestive system. And here at Intact, we focus on creating a treatment for the oral aspect of mucositis. So when I first came to Intact, I was exposed to a lot of information and a lot of different materials and elements used to create a formulation, as you can see here. And the ones, the circles highlighted in green are ones that I will be talking about in specific. For example, the Luciferase Reporter assay was an assay conducted that basically just records bioluminescence. And bioluminescence is basically just light emitting from cellular reactions. The RSPO protein is basically, in quote, the medicine aspect of the formulation. And it also positively correlates to high numbers of bioluminescence. Also, paloxomers is, in quote, the delivery vehicle for the drug, um, which I'll be talking about more in a second. And lastly, the cell line that we use. So the cell line that we use, um, sorry, is called... Oh, Um, I can't see the, the cell line, complete cell line name, but it's STF cells. And what these cells do is they mimic epithelial cell morphology, which is perfect because we want to treat epithelial cells in the um, oral cavity. And so it's perfect to work with our experiments. And alongside from working with the cells, I also had to conduct cell splitting procedures, which basically meant ensuring that the cell population doesn't overpopulate, which is also very bad for the cells. It, it can end up dying. So basically, I would take a fraction of the cells and transfer it into a new cell plate to ensure that overpopulation doesn't incur occur. And paloxomers. So paloxomers was the key for this formulation. Paloxomers are a thermosensitive hydrogel, which basically means that in cold temperatures, they're very liquidy, soluble, and in warm temperatures, they're very thick and dense. Now here's a short list of paloxomers that we used in lab, A, B, C, and D. And so throughout my internship, we just performed a bunch of assays to see which paloxomer works best with the RSPO protein. And we found that paloxomer E with RSPO protein had the highest increase of bioluminescence. Now we didn't just stop there because we also wanted to understand the interaction between the two. And so one question that we did come to was if paloxomers themselves proliferated cells, which is why we were getting these high bioluminescent numbers, or if paloxomer increased the activity of RSPO. Um, and in order to answer this question, we had to conduct more assays. So this is the gist of the assay procedure. It's a three-day procedure. Day one, we seeded the cells into the 96 well plate. Day two, we prepared the test group samples. And for example, in this example, we, it was either paloxomer with RSPO or just paloxomer by itself. And then in day three is when we actually concluded the assay procedure. So we took half of this 96 well plate, transferred it to the microplate reader, and the microplate reader would simply just give us the bioluminescent recordings. And we used that data to compare it to the cell count. The cell count was a little different because we had to manually count the cells and crunch the numbers to get the overall number of cells in each well. And with both those results, we were able to make some more conclusions. So on the left, we see that paloxomer by itself with low RSPO has almost zero um, bioluminescent activity. And when paloxomer with RSPO, when they're combined together, there's a high increase in bioluminescent activity. Now that tells us that both of them, again, have an increase of bioluminescent activity. And the average cell count on the right 
can tell us that there is little to no difference in cell count. As you can see, the paloxamer with no RSPO and the paloxamer with RSPO have almost the same number of cells. So what does that tell us? That can help us understand that neither paloxamer or RSPO have anything to do with cell proliferation, whether it's, it's just their interaction that increases this bioluminescent activity. So as you can see here, one conclusion that we did come to is that RSPO, when mixed with paloxamer, just increases its dispersion. And when there's more dispersion with the drug, there's more activity that's available, hence there being a higher bioluminescent activity. Now, for the next steps, this is just one very specific paloxamer and one very specific protein. Now, imagine if we applied this paloxamer molecule to other existing medical treatments that we can, you know, discover more, more understandings and how they interact and how they work. So the possibilities are endless. The application of paloxamers is vast and there's a lot to, to learn about. Now, my own reflection and understanding, I really appreciate this experience that I got. Working at a startup, not only did I do I know how a startup actually works, there's a lot of nuts and bolts that I also learned, such as project management. And also, you know, just working in the lab. I like doing lab work and this um strengthened my my passion for lab work and I, I really appreciate it. Now, thanks and acknowledgements. So big shout out to Ravi. He's the boss man, Mr. CEO. He's the guy on the left. And shout out to Chris, who was my mentor. He was with me through every step of the way and answered every question. I really appreciate um, the work that, that he did and, and the help that he gave me. And also shout out to Priya, who was an intern, and Anu, who uh, worked on the project management for the company. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Thank you, guys. Wow.